Don't do it. Don't do it. I know you guys are out there sleeping on sponsored display, but don't do it. Sponsored display is the most underestimated form of Amazon advertising, especially this year in 2025 when it's really ripping. Sponsored display is like the bass player in the band. Nobody notices him standing in the back until he suddenly rips out on the front of the stage and starts ripping tasty lines. Anyway. I'm here to teach you guys about sponsor display. Today we're going to walk through an entire sponsor display campaign setup. Plus, I'm going to walk you through some successful sponsor display campaigns that we actually have running for our brands. By the way, I'm Chris Rawlings. I run a portfolio that does over six million a month on Amazon, and I'm one of the top spenders of Amazon ads on the platform. And this is your ultimate guide to sponsor display. So we're going to go to the hamburger menu, go to advertising campaign manager. Here we are in our ad console. So we're going to hit create campaign. And over on the right hand side is where we see sponsor display. So you hit continue here. And now we're in the sponsor display campaign setup view. Now, if you've never set up a sponsor display campaign, some of this is going to look familiar from sponsored products and sponsored brands. You have your campaign name, your portfolio, make sure to name the campaign something sensible, like the product that you're advertising, whether it's product targeting or category targeting or retargeting. And then whether it's sponsored display video, sponsored display image, or sponsored display default graphic, put it in the portfolio that matches your product. Set a daily budget. I have a whole video on budgets. You can check it on my channel. Don't worry about the ad groups right now. You can use that in the future to split test different creatives. All right, now we get into optimization strategy. So this is how Amazon optimizes your bids, quote unquote. And it's just the style of bid optimization that they're using. Now there's really only two, which is cost per click and cost per thousand impressions. So that's CPC or VCPM, cost per viewable thousand impressions. This one is really for what brands would call brand awareness, which I'm not a big fan of. The concept of brand awareness doesn't pay my bills. People being aware of my brand on Amazon, it's not a brand awareness type of platform. It's a direct solution type of platform. People are looking for solutions right now. Now that's not to say that you should never do VCPM. It can be useful to push spots that are really hard to get, especially if they're very competitive. And also when you're just trying to do brand defense, sometimes this allows you to completely dominate your own listings. But for the most part, you're going to be selecting optimized bids for conversions because that's what we really want, right? Is sales. Now this cost control section is relatively new. Amazon's still kind of ironing out the kinks with this. So I'd recommend that you keep it unchecked just so that you can manage your costs through bidding as you normally would in a campaign. It's something to test out if you already have sponsored display campaigns running that are doing well and you want to try something new. All right, next we have the ad format. So either you can put in a custom image or a custom video, or you could do neither of those things just by leaving custom image on and not uploading anything custom. And then what Amazon's going to do is just show the default thumbnail. I'm going to show you what this looks like to a shopper. All right, so as a shopper on a listing, this is a sponsored display ad, this banner up here. This is a sponsored display ad underneath the bullet points down here. This is a sponsored display ad down here above the reviews. So sponsored display ads actually take the most different forms. And we'll look at this at the end when Amazon has a little preview of what the different forms will look like for us. So the default you're going to want to go with is just image where Amazon will just generate the image for you based on your primary image your reviews, your coupons, your price, just like it would a sponsored product, but it just looks different and it has a lot of different formats, whereas a sponsored product ad always looks the same. Then you choose where the customer lands. So you can either have them land on the product or on the storefront. Now I recommend having them land on the product. This makes the most sense unless you know that people who land on your store have a high average order value and they tend to convert, in which case, your store is proven and you can test out stores. Okay, next you're gonna select the products to advertise. I recommend doing one at a time. That keeps it nice and clean. All right, now here's where we get into the juicy stuff, which is targeting. Amazon gives you four main categories of targeting. There's contextual, remarketing, in-market audiences, and interest and lifestyle audiences. Really, these two are just different types of audiences. So really there's three main types. It's regular contextual targeting, which is very similar to sponsored brands or sponsored product targeting remarketing and audiences. Contextual targeting, if you click this, you're gonna see a very familiar setup if you've done sponsored products or sponsored brand campaigns before. You can either target categories or individual products. Now I'll tell you right now, we are seeing category targeting working really well this year. This is definitely worth trying out, not just in sponsored display, but sponsored brands and sponsored products as well. Category targeting is tending to do better. So this is a trend. I would definitely recommend testing it out if you haven't yet. And when you target a category, Amazon's suggested categories are usually pretty good. Like in this example, 
we're selling a pitcher water filter. So Amazon says that the first category we should try is pitcher water filters. So we're just gonna click add there and the category is now added. Now in terms of what to bid, I have a whole video about how to choose your starting bid. This really comes down to what you're willing to pay based on the amount of clicks you need and your conversion rate to get an A cost that is acceptable for you. You can watch my whole video on bidding, you can find it on my channel, but in general, honestly, this bid doesn't matter that much, the first bid you put in, because really you're just gonna be adjusting this over time. If you're not getting enough impressions, you're just gonna up the bid. If you're getting really low A costs and you wanna get more sales from the campaign, you're gonna up the bid. If the A cost is too high and it's spending too much, you're just gonna lower the bid. And eventually you'll find the bid that works the best for that particular campaign, for that particular ad. At the end of the day, if you're really desperate, you can use Amazon's suggested bid, but I don't recommend it. I'd rather you watch the video on bidding that I have on my channel, use that to calculate your starting bid, and then put that in here. But again, not a huge deal. You'll adjust that over time. Now, Amazon's gonna have pre-filled some of these for you. I recommend Xing those out so that you can select your own. And make sure you do that, because if you don't do that and you add a few, you're actually advertising to different audiences that you didn't even mean to or didn't even select. So category targeting is working really well. Individual products is similar to sponsored brands, sponsored products where you're just advertising on that product's listing or you're targeting advertising on that product's listing. Sponsor display is the only ad type out of the three major ad types where you can't target keywords. It's only about targeting categories, audiences, and products. This is honestly part of what makes it so special. All right, now let's talk about remarketing. So remarketing means we are showing our product to somebody who has either viewed our listing or purchased our product. There's also a third type, which is remarketing, quote unquote, to people who have viewed products that are similar to ours. Now that might kind of break your brain because you're like, is that really remarketing? No, it's actually really not remarketing. The only difference between that type of remarketing and product targeting is that when you do that, it can show up on any listing as long as that shopper has viewed one of your competitors' listings that's similar to your product before. So it's not that we're putting it on our competitors' listings, we're putting it in front of shoppers who have been on our competitors' listings, regardless of what listing they're on. That's the big difference. Okay, now pay attention here, because now I'm about to share with you something that's working right now. This is gonna be some timely information for you guys. I literally just got off our Sophie Mastermind early this morning when we were talking about this. Something that's working well for us right now is remarketing to similar to advertised products. Sometimes it works better than remarketing to the advertised products themselves, which is weird. Now notice, under this look back area, there's this drop down that says views. You're gonna see two options there. One is views and one is purchases. Views means you're remarketing to people who have viewed a listing, either your listing or a competitor's listing. Purchases means you're remarketing to someone who has purchased your product. And then after that, you get to select the look back period. This means within what period did they view the listing or purchase the product. So say I have a supplement where people generally run out every 60 days and the supply lasts 60 days. So I'm gonna try purchase marketing for the last 60 days because I know that 60 days is how long it takes for them to run out. Now, that being said, a lot of times the look back period that works best isn't the one that you think would have worked best. So I might think 60 days because that's how long it takes for someone to use my supplement. But what I'm gonna do instead of just trusting that is test out 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and 180 days. We have plenty of examples of consumable products or supplements in our portfolio where you'd think that the supply would run out in say 30 or 60 days, but the look back period that actually does best is 90 days or 180 days. The only way to really know is to test out multiple of them at once. And you can create multiple ones just by clicking add, then changing the look back period, and then clicking add again. So you can have multiple look back periods in the same ad and in the same ad group, and you just test them and look at them when you're optimizing the campaign in the targeting tab of the campaign. Okay, then you have in-market audiences. This is dynamic audiences. So this is audiences based on their purchase activity and their shopping activity, not based on their interests. Down here is the interest and lifestyle audiences that you would think of, like people into cars or people into fashion or whatever. So let's take a look at some of these in-market audiences. So first, Amazon shows us suggested audiences but we can also just browse through all their audiences. And we'll browse through a couple of these, but as you can see, there's a ton and it goes really, really deep. Once you open some of these up, you find that a lot of them are actually off Amazon shoppers of a certain category. So the one that Amazon suggested might actually be good for us, which is off Amazon water coolers and filter shoppers. In general, you're not gonna use in-market audiences as much as you're gonna use contextual targeting and remarketing audiences, 
but it's definitely worth a shot if your sponsor display campaigns are really crushing and you want to expand them. Finally, interest in lifestyle audiences, you're going to see a lot of dynamic segments here. So some of these suggestions are completely wacky and don't really make any sense. Switchers from Verizon Files lookalikes. It's like, what? This is a water filter. But if you go to browse, you'll actually find some interesting stuff in here. If I go to shoppers, for example, you can see I can see payment method, shopper types, high price shoppers, luxury shoppers, online shoppers, seasonal shoppers, shopping behaviors, and I can see affluent shoppers, Amazon shoppers that provide reviews. So there's some really interesting audiences to mess around with in here, especially under the shopping behavior section, because a lot of these other ones are just interest based. But even the interest based ones, some of them are actually interesting. So under pets and dogs, for example, I see grain free dog food and treats shoppers, grain free dog food shoppers, natural food dog shoppers. So these are audiences that it's worth a try again, if your sponsor display campaigns are already crushing. But if you're just starting your sponsor display campaign types, I recommend starting with contextual targeting and particularly category targeting and product targeting, and also remarketing. Then once your campaigns are really ripping, you can come in here and try some of these dynamic audience segments. Now I wouldn't recommend putting a bunch of different audiences in here from different audience types. If you're gonna do remarketing, just do the remarketing audiences. If you're gonna do category targeting, just do category targeting and do a separate campaign when you do a separate type of targeting. This allows you to track it and optimize it much easier when you're going back into the campaign to make it perform better. Then finally, you have the creative. Now here in the creative area, it's gonna show you what the thumbnail is gonna look like in a bunch of different formats. There's actually a ton of different formats to look at, and you can look at the preview of each one. You can see there's 12 different formats that it'll allow us to look at, and these just show up in different places on the listing. Some of them show up in search, but a vast majority of it show up on product listings, and it could also show up off Amazon. Now, if you close this X on the image suggestions here, you can actually add a custom image and a custom headline if you want. But if you don't have it, it's totally fine. You could just run it as the default thumbnail. That's the way most of our sponsor display ads run and that works totally fine. So your default, if you're just starting out is just have it be the default thumbnail. And then you can try testing out custom images if you have an image that you think really rips or it shows a feature that's missing in the rest of the marketplace. Then you can launch your campaign and you're good to go. Now let's check out a few sponsor display campaigns that we have running right now. So you can see these sponsor display campaigns, they're not doing nothing. I mean, a lot of people think of sponsor display as like a tiny sliver of their total ad spend or their total ad sales, but this is significant. You know, we have campaigns doing tens of thousands in sales and in total, all in all, the sponsor display campaigns here have totaled over a hundred thousand in revenue. And this is not a very old account. It's like just over a year old. So let's go through a few of these. So this is a views remarketing campaign for products similar to advertised products. We tried a 30 day look back period and a 60 day look back period. And you can see this is our top selling sponsor display campaign with an A cost of 16.6%, .6%, which is really good for this account. Honestly, that's good for any account. Then our next highest performing one did 19,000 in revenue and 18% A cost. This was targeting particular products. Remember the contextual targeting where you target particular products. And by the way, just to go back to look at this views remarketing campaign, say I open this up now inside the campaign, if I go down and click on the ad group, then it's going to open up the ad group view where I can click targeting and down here's where I see the look back period. So now I can see how the different look back periods are performing. We got one with 60 day look back period and one with a 30 day look back period. And we could see that the one with the 30 day look back period is performing significantly better, driving a lot more revenue and with a lower a cost. So that's the one we're going to want to juice. That's the one we're going to feed. And from now on, we know what look back period works best for this product. Okay. Next we have a category targeting sponsor display product. You can see that we're targeting the entire category of pitcher water filters. We've got significant amount of orders there at a 36% A cost. So it's not doing quite as well as the other two campaigns, but it's still performing pretty good and it's within KPI and it's producing a significant amount of orders. Here we have another views remarketing campaign. Next, we have another product targeting campaign, but this is only competitors that have a lower rating than us. This one's crushing at a 10% A cost. We have a remarketing campaign of our own advertised products with a 23% A cost It's doing pretty well. Another product targeting campaign with competitors, a product targeting campaign with 25% A cost where we were remarketing to similar to advertised products. Sponsor display this year is working better than ever. And it seems to be taking up a greater and greater slice of the overall ad revenue generated by Amazon ads. So don't sleep on sponsor display. You got to check it out. If you need help growing your brand profitably with Amazon PPC using advanced strategies like these, 
That's what we do at my company in Sophie Society. To see if you qualify to partner with us to take over your PPC and grow your brand profitably, click the link in the description of this video and you can apply there, it takes 30 seconds. And by the way, if you're not sure about how to set the bid that we were talking about when we were setting up the sponsor display campaign, check out this video here that I did all about bidding with a very simple formula about how to select and choose your bid when you're first setting up any campaign of any ad type. Once you've watched this video, you will never have any questions about Amazon bidding ever again. See you over there. Enjoy. Keep ripping.